Yo, what's good guys? This is Nightwing2303 from Weartesters.com. On behalf of everybody over at Weartesters, all the staff members, including myself, we would like to wish everybody out there a happy holiday. I hope everybody's safe. I hope everybody's having fun, enjoying the season of giving. And speaking of giving, that's what we're here for today. I am about to give you guys my top performance picks of 2017. So every year I like to switch things up. I don't like doing the same, just basic top 10 or top five or whatever it might be. I like to do everything different every single year. The one thing that is constant through all of these videos is that these are all of my just personal opinions and my personal preferences based off of my personal experiences with all of these sneakers. I do try to keep everybody else in mind, different types of players, different types of attributes that someone else might need. So I hope that this list just helps everybody out. But again, this is based off of my personal experiences and opinions on these sneakers. And with that being said, we have some honorable mentions. We almost have a whole top five of honorable mentions because there was a lot of good shoes from this year. I think that every brand has at least one shoe that was just fantastic. The Jordan Superfly 2017, the Crazy Explosive 2017, as well as the Antic KT3 and the Anta KT Outdoor Low. I feel like every single one of these shoes are awesome. However, every one of them does have a slight drawback. The main reason why the Crazy Explosive 2017 is on here is because it's a very similar performer to my top pick last year, which was the 2016 edition. That's not to take anything away from the 2017 model, but I like to put fresh meat basically in these lists. I don't like to kind of like repeat everything. And not a lot had changed between the 2016 model and the 2017 model. Basically the upper is just a little bit more refined. So the fit just feels a little bit better. You feel a little bit more locked in, a little bit more secure, but everything else you're, you're pretty much good to go. The same traction, the same support, the same cushion, all that kind of good stuff. Everything that was awesome in last year's model is still awesome in this year's model. Now the Superfly 2017 was nearly perfect, man. That that shoe, the only thing wrong with it, and I'm not even like, I'm not joking, the only thing wrong with that shoe is the cushion, React. React is just not very good right now. Hopefully they redo the mixture of the foam compound or whatever they wanna do to make it better, but that was the only downside to that sneaker. I think that everything on that shoe was fantastic. Then the KT3, just a little bit of volume around the toe. The fit wasn't as perfect as I would personally like it to be, but the cushion was awesome, as was the traction, as was the materials. They were a little boot-like, but I'm really excited to play in the low tops. And then the Anta KT Outdoor Low, it's not like a phenomenal sneaker as far as like being super tech heavy or gimmicky or anything like that. But what it does do is it comes in way under budget and it performs. It's durable, it's lightweight, it's comfortable, great traction. You can't ask for much more. And now we're gonna break things off into segmented categories. We're gonna be taking a look at cushion, materials, and fit. And basically I'm just gonna pick one or two models that I feel best suits the overall year for that category. Almost like it's award season, but it's not. So for me, the best fitting shoe or shoes for 2017. This is a very specific thing, by the way. This is how I like my shoes to fit, which is on the snug side. And for that, I picked the Nike PG1 as well as the Kobe AD NXT. Both of those shoes are very solid on court and all the other attributes, but I think that the fit for me, especially like the way that I like my shoes to fit, I think that those two were phenomenal in that category. Now, as far as materials, there's actually three shoes because these three shoes had really awesome materials. And that is the Air Jordan 30 the Jordan Superfly 2017, as well as the Nike PG1. The PG1 featured what I like to call the best of the old and some of the best of the new. The rear section felt premium and old school. Meanwhile, the forefoot was new age. It was mesh, it was lightweight, very easy to break in. The Jordan 32, however, uses Flyknit in the best iteration that we have seen on a basketball shoe so far, in my personal opinion, of course. And then the Jordan Superfly 2017 used some buttery nubuck or suede. I don't know what it was, but it was it was awesome. Now, last but not least is the cushion. If you are interested in cushion and nothing else, cushions are like your top priority for a sneaker. You cannot go wrong with the LeBron 15 or the Crazy Explosive 2017. Those are the two best cushion options that you have on the market today. Boost is life, everybody knows this. It's got the greatest amount of impact protection of anything on the market. And then runner up to that is the Max Zoom unit found in the Nike LeBron 15. The two main differences between the two is that boost, you're able to get a little bit lower to the ground than you are in an air unit. So that provides a little bit more stability, but some people don't mind riding too high off the floor. So that's where the Air Max unit comes in. And I mean, you can't you can't go wrong with Max Zoom. That stuff's awesome. So that's it for award season. A round of applause for the shoes that made it in those categories. Yay. Now we got two things left. We got my personal pick 
and we got my top five. So we're gonna start with my personal top pick. Most of you guys already know. It's these bad boys right here. This is the Under Armour Curry 4. The one thing that this shoe lacks is cushion, but everything else I feel that they very much excel at. The fit I feel is awesome. It's the best fitting curry since the two. Traction, beastly. Still a bunch of dust all over this one. I use these quite often. If I'm not testing a shoe, I'm grabbing these. And now, the moment that you guys have all been waiting for, my top five. Now my top five for the year, I tried to keep everybody in mind, not just myself. So these are what I feel are kind of like the most well-rounded sneakers. So at number five is the Air Jordan 32. I personally prefer the low top over the mid top version. For whatever reason, I felt the low had a little bit better traction than the mids. But otherwise, like I said, this is just a really well-rounded sneaker. I would say it's one flaw is that it's kind of heavy and stiff at first. But if you give them some time, break them in, you'll be good to go. They offer heel and forefoot cushion, great materials. The fit's awesome. The support is there as well. Like I said, it's just very well-rounded. My number four pick is the Way of Wade 6. This is something that I haven't gotten around to actually doing the review for yet, so I apologize about that. Stay tuned though. I'm not going to give too much away out of this shoe as far as its performance features, just because, again, the, the review is not out yet. I really apologize. I was trying to get this thing out before this video, but it doesn't look like that's happening, obviously. <laughs> Sorry. But I absolutely love these things. I would say it's one drawback is the traction could be a little bit better, but I feel like everything else on these is awesome. The cushion is something that you just have to try. It's brand new cushion. The guys that created Boost also created the four foot cushion in these guys. I think they call it drive foam. It's a polyurethane compound, which is interesting because polyurethane is an old tech, but it doesn't have to feel like a brick. And this proves that perfectly. Now, number three is the Curry 3-0. These guys, I feel are just leaps and bounds better than the actual Curry 3. The downside is, is that they're just kind of bulky. You know what I mean? Like in today's era of like sleek sneakers, especially comparing it with this one, these are just, you know, a little bit on the old school side. Not a bad thing, obviously it's at number three, but I think that these guys excel at everything really, really nicely. Great traction, cushions adequate, stability is definitely there. The materials could be a little bit better, but they're durable, so you can't complain too much. And you could probably find these for a very good price under retail right now, which is a huge bonus. Now my number two spot goes to the Dame 3. Much like the Curry 3-0, these guys are a little bit on the bulky side, especially right here in the back of the shoe. But again, like the Curry 3, everything else is very, very nice. Great traction, awesome cushion, contain stability, materials, all that stuff. I highly, highly recommend these. I just think these are awesome. A lot of people complain about heel slip with these. I don't have that issue, thank goodness. But I absolutely love these things. I just think that they're beasts. My number one pick, there's actually two of them because I couldn't decide. This is a question that everybody keeps asking me on everything, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. Everybody's asking, which one would you choose between these two shoes? And this is the answer. I can't. These two take the number one spot. And it's these guys right here, man. You got the Dame 4, the Kyrie 4. This is the year of the four. Am I right? I think that these are very, very comparable. They're nearly identical shoes as far as what they offer. Traction, cushion, materials, overall fit. Everything is, is nearly on par with one another. I would say the only difference between the two is that the Dames actually sit a little bit lower to the ground than the Kyrie's do. So you get a little bit more four foot cushion in these guys, but just a little bit. I think that the best part is that these shoes right here show you that you do not have to spend more than $120 to get a solid basketball shoe. Not only does it show consumers that you can get something for an affordable price, but it also should show the brands like, hey guys, you don't have to charge $185 for a sneaker. $120 or less is perfect. And you can obviously stick to that budget and still produce a high quality, high performing shoe, which is what both of these guys are. But that pretty much takes care of it. Those are my top performance picks for the year of 2017. My top five, my top personal pick, most of these shoes you can grab right now over at eastbay.com if you are interested. I don't think you can go wrong really with any of the shoes that were in the top five. Again, I just think that they're some of the most well-rounded sneakers of the year. If you've played in any of these shoes, feel free to let me know what you guys think about them down below in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for your support. It's been one hell of a year, especially for basketball shoes. I know that sales are down, but performance and quality is up, which is great for us consumers. I think that's awesome. We have plenty of options to choose from. We don't have to bust out a lot of money to do it, and we get something very solid for our Court Adventures. So thank you guys once again. Happy holidays to everybody. I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, guys, have a good one.